are hand blown rondelles. Uh, most of them are ones that Ben Moore blew. Benny is one of my best friends. Um, you know, generally, if you really want to become good friends with somebody, remember what I said about artists love to work? Is to work with them. Here's what I do. When Traper calls me up and says, we got to get rid of some more of our screens. We've got too many of them down here. Here, check out back here. Look back. <laughs> There's where my, there's where my screens are stored up. back oh there. Oh my goodness. I know. You know, you feel like those nuts where they would pile the newspapers <laughs> yes. up so high you can barely get around them. <laughs> yes. And so, um, uh, wow. so if, you know, if I safely tuck them away, then I feel like I can make more. You know, if I had them all over, it's like, oh, I'm not going to make any more. I'm drowning in these things. You know, anything on a panel. That was heavily influenced by me taking pictures. You guys can just open that stuff up and write them through. Can you pull it out? Yeah, go ahead. This is These are all directly connected to the photography in the sense that these, these pieces are all painted with tar. And then I have other things like, so I have uh, antique guns that'll go with the passenger pigeon and they're called quote unquote pigeon guns because they were designed to be used for, you know, hunting passenger pigeons. They felt it was an endless thing. So, and and they're all they're all part of this whole commentary on man's interaction with this world that he perceives to be endless. So this shelf slides over the box, and inside the box is the story. So there's the painting of the passenger pigeon that you saw down there. Here's a, a blown glass egg of a passenger pigeon, and then you saw the pigeon gun upstairs. So this is. So, and this is a piece of wood that's cut and grain that's, you know, six feet long mm -hmm. and it's all salvaged old growth and that's the center of the tree. So, then you connect with uh, somebody doing dendrochronology, which is the aging of a, you know, of a tree. Mm -hmm. You can just use this tree and this, like, you know, three and a half foot span that represents so many hundred years to talk about how from here to here we did everything that we did. Mm -hmm. This book is Dan, Dan Jansen's book about butterflies, 100 Butterflies and Moths. Uh, Great. Okay. And then the un one underneath it is the Caterpillar book. So Ginny has a beautiful garden in her house as well. difficult this would be, but we we love the, the grape chandelier up here from Waterford. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> sure, that makes an excuse for me to change the boat. <laughs> well, we, can, we can change the boat for you. <laughs> that, that would be great. Oh, the other cool thing about that is a couple things. It's neodymium glass. Oh. I don't know what that's a rare earth element that changes color when the light is reflected or transmitted. So if you have the light on it, it's one color, light through it, it's another color. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Wow. And they had never done that at really? Waterford. But then to put color in glass, it was, I had to push. Oh, 
<laughs> you have to push. <laughs> but the thing about these is these actually actually work like apertures in a camera where everything behind here is turned upside down and backwards, which I, metaphorically speaking, I think that's kind of kind of ties in with the children because that's what kids do, is kind of turn your life upside down and backwards. I started getting interested in, in looking at the glass as a solid thing and, and identifying um, kind of an interior space, so uh, I, I developed this coloration process where I would use these geometrically formed molds and, and I would make colored panels that I would slide just on one side of the mold. So there's actually, in the case of this piece right here, which has a triangular shaped legs, but only one side has color on it. So as you walk around the piece, the color will disappear and reappear. And so it's, it's very active. Then I found this book it's called The Beginner's Guide to Constructing the Universe. It explores the numbers 0 through 9, which is all the numbers you need to make any number in the world. 0 is actually the number. But it, it talks about their significance in nature and how all things in nature have a geometric significance. So you can break down insects and fruit and all things organic and you can find uh, geometric formulas, all sorts of geometric patterns, uh, fractals, all sorts of stuff that go on. I didn't really want to replicate anything in nature. I just wanted to make the forms and, and make organic sculptures out of them. And, and a couple of these, like this one and the clear one here, they have this spiral, which is kind of a, 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 an homage to the Fibonacci curve. You know, obviously the kitschy uh, American Indian kitsch stuff that that obviously is not a, something that we're going to focus on, but like those kind of cheesy, uh, you know, production stuff. That's you know, sort of the ra racist Indian you know, shot glasses, hip flasks. So there's a little shot and then the big shot. <laughs> I have consistently had uh, religious imagery, you know, incorporated in my work, but I think of myself as a secular person. I, I love all of the um, spiritual traditions, so I, I guess I'm a universalist in that, and I think they're all talking to the same things. And this has that going for it too, but it's out of, this is out of the Islamic tradition, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. a Prince Bahram Gur slaying a dragon. I love this one, actually, quite a bit. Searching for the Bodhisattva, as a spirit canoe carries my soul toward the divine child of my dreams. So this is me, the little angel with a spyglass, and my dog, Canis. My friend's cat, Pilot, who was ancient. He's piloting the spirit the canoe. Spirit, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so here's the um, cosmic sea, and here's the Bodhisattva Tempa. who's holding me. And the Bodhisattva is a Buddha. So there we, yes. there we, so anyway, so there are, there's, I've sort of morphed this thing from uh, my life and my dreams and world mythology and... Um... When I think about my work, I'm a very passionate person, okay? And people have to understand passion isn't just the ecstasy of passion. Passion is also the agony. Um, I'm, an, a very, I'm a very emotional artist. And so, in order to create something like this figure to piece, it's intense. And it's a hundred percent where you, you just dive in and um, you, your, your sense of presence and your commitment, um, and your commitment to your team and your commitment to what you're gonna make is 
uh, is really how these objects manifest. He comes fully oh. intact. <laughs> and I don't know why no one put a string on that. <laughs> so, Maybe it had one. Right, right. So um, I was a puppeteer when I was a young man. And so I have this puppet and I have this big, look at this guy from Burma. You know, this is one of my, one of my, my, my beauties. This is Doja and his hands move and he's just a, a royal, um, just an amazing, you know, amazing dancer that comes out.